Welcome to part two of the computer build. So with part one out of the way, a lot of the unboxing and prep work and file transfer is done, or at least in progress in the background. So first step of actually building the computer, let's get out the case. With everything taken off, we're left with the case itself and a packet of accessories. I really like how this case looks. I've always been attracted to cases and just stuff for my computer in general that looks simple but tasteful, right? Like a little bit of style, a little bit of flair, but not that hashtag gamer aesthetic. And this is like perfect for me. So for one, it's very compact. It's a, a mini or micro, micro ATX case. Very nice size, way smaller than the one I currently have. It's got this super simple aesthetic with just, just the right amount of flair. Front is just totally flat. There's no vents at all, which does mean not amazing airflow, but we get some air a couple different ways. Actually, I'll show you one of them now. So this not only looks cool, but also is some airflow. There's this sort of honeycomb, let me get the flashlight on. It's this sort of honeycomb design on the side here. You can see that lets air in and out. So instead of through the front, like many cases, it comes through the front side. The non-airflow side has a tempered glass panel. Let's go ahead and take this off. I think it's just like the single hinge up here, so no actual screws, which is quite nice. Yeah, look at that. It has a power supply shroud, which is kind of a new uh, trend, I guess. New to me, because last time I built uh, my computer, that wasn't really a thing. It didn't come with any sort of a cover. And although it can hurt with airflow, because you're covering up something and obstructing something inside of the case, I do think aesthetically it works a lot better. It allows you to hide cables much better. Power supply goes in there, and then of course you have a rat's nest of cables always, no matter what, coming out of the power supply. Allows you to cover all that up. Looks like we have a drive bay up here for, I think, a standard size hard drive. I'll be taking that out. I won't need it. No hard drives of any sort are going inside of any drive bay, just the M2 drive going on the motherboard directly. In terms of cooling, there's places for five different 120 millimeter fans. So there's two spots up here in the front. I believe I'll be able to fit both of them. There's a possibility I won't be able to fit the bottom one in case the video card is too long this way. It might hit the fan, but I think it'll be okay. My, I mean, my video card isn't that long. I think it's about 10 point something inches. I think it'll be fine. So I should be able to put two fans here. You can see it's a bit from the fan mounting point till the front of the case. So you got a little bit of distance, which is good because they're gonna need to, I'm probably gonna make them intakes. So they're gonna need to draw air in from over here, which is where the honeycomb structure is. You can see it very slightly along with all sorts of connectors here for, uh, I believe that would be for all the like LEDs and the front IO panel would be what those connectors are for. But yeah, they're gonna have to draw air in from the side. So it's a good thing that they have a little bit of room before they get the front of the case. If they're directly against it, then you'd have terrible, terrible airflow. So hopefully that'll be okay. There's also room for two fans on the bottom. These I'm not too sure about. These could actually be obstructed by the video card. So if we look here, these are the expansion slots. You can see there's four of them on the back. So the video card is very large. It's not super long, but it's very thick. Um, it's pretty rare for a high-end video card nowadays to even be one slot. At this point, usually they're more around two, but this one's even a little bit thicker. It's actually two and a half slots. So it's gonna come down to like, you know, here or so. We're gonna have only a little bit of space here for the fans. Depends how thick they are, we'll see. And they are gonna be almost touching the video card. Uh, looks like we also have a dust filter, a removable dust filter down here. You can see there's mesh. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So that's a whole new thing to me as well. Um, my current case doesn't have filters that are... They might... I'm sure they're removable in some way if you, like, take the whole thing apart, but this is... This is a very easy system to take it out. You wouldn't even need to take off this tempered glass side panel to get at this. And, of course, the fifth fan spot is this 120 millimeter mounting spot in the back. God, this thing is really sturdy. So I knew it was going to be sturdy from the reviews that I'd read. I heard this thing is built like a tank, like you could practically stand on it. But yeah, this is really thick, actually. I don't know if you can really tell, but even this grating. Like, I can't even really barely bend the grating at all. Even though most of it's, you know, not there. 
This is very thick metal. I'm also gonna try to do actually good cable management for this case, which I've never done before. As you'll see, I will show you my old case because I'm gonna have to grab the power supply out of it. So in my attempt to do that, the case should help a lot. Again, it has the shroud here for the power supply. And also there are some other things that will cover up the cords until you need to see them. Obviously they have to be exposed when they connect into the part at the very end, but for most of the way to the connection, they don't need to be exposed. So for example, they can come from the power supply up here and they can come think yeah they can come into this little covering here you see there's a little cutout here so the power cables can come down here and then out and then connect to the motherboard video card fans etc now before I go any further with this case I want to make sure I have all my parts ready so these are all I mean sort of ready they're in boxes they're out however there's one probably pretty obvious thing missing I didn't buy a power supply because the power supply that I'm going to use is inside of my current computer. So I was waiting for all the file transfer stuff to finish with that external hard drive, and now it has. So I've shut it down for probably the last time. I don't know if I'm ever gonna start this thing up again, but let me go grab it, open it up, and I'll be back in just a sec. There is my current computer, about to be my past computer. It's the Cooler Master Half that is HAF something. I don't remember the model number. It doesn't seem to say it anywhere obvious on the case. So it's a Cooler Master half something. Just to show you what a monster it is and also just how small this other case is. It's so much smaller. Also, um, yeah, I, I don't, um, this isn't like a white panel in front. That's dust. I should clean my computer better and really, really keep better care of it. It's just that for a long time now, I've been like, ah, oh, I really should just upgrade soon. So I've kind of just ignored it. I'm like, what's the point of cleaning it? God. Just PSA, don't let your computer get like this. It didn't actually seem to affect anything in particular, but yeah, uh, not good. So part of the dust problem should be partially addressed just by the fact that this case has a lot less meshing on it. Like this whole front is all mesh, which is really good for airflow because air can flow through pretty much the entire front. And there's fans, of course, on the inside in front. But obviously it's also bad for dust because you're pulling in dust from all over the place and it very easily gets stuck in all these little holes and all the filters that are inside of the holes. So this should just pull in a lot less dust because of that reason. And of course, if it pulls in dust from the bottom, I got this nice dust filter that I could easily take out. So it's partially just the case design being different that should make the dust situation better. Plus, hopefully me being more um, comp competent, actually caring about how good my case is, because like this is the build that I care about the most. Not that I didn't care about my other builds, but like I'm determined to do this one right. I want it to look right. I want it to look good. I want it to be good. I'm hopeful for this one, <laughs> that it won't end up like a dust monster. All right, first things first, let's try to rescue this poor power supply. Power supplies, at least if you get good ones, do tend to last for a long time. So that's why I don't feel bad about reusing this. It's got all the connectors I need. Yeah, it's a 650 watt power supply, which is actually more than I need. I could do with a 500 watt one and be fine. And it's Seasonic, which is a good brand. So yeah, I feel totally comfortable using this for a long time. By the way, take a look at my card here, my video card. Look at how massive that thing is. That's the 770 gigabyte uh, Windforce, I believe the brand is. This is the video card I bought specifically because it looks totally overkill, right? I mean, it's a two slot cooler, it takes up two slots. It's really long, it has three fans. I see tons of heat pipes in there. Like it looks like it'd be overkill, but this thing sounds like a jet engine. And no, it's not because the case is dusty, by the way. It sounded like a jet engine even the first day that I got it. This thing's an absolute monster. It's almost 12 inches long. All right, first things first, let's disconnect this power supply. So it's modular. So these two connectors here can be unplugged. Um, there is a base set of stuff that I guess you always need, I assume, that comes out of here that is not disconnectable. So that is staying put, but these can come out. You know, just to give me some more breathing room, actually, I'm gonna take off this SSD holder here. Give me a little bit more room to work. Oh, good. So this is good design. I was thinking 
if there's two screws in the back, just like there's two screws in the front, that's going to be really hard to remove because how am I going to get a screwdriver back here without like taking out the video card? But you actually don't have to. It just has these little, I don't know what you'd call them, like clip things. It just clips underneath the thing over here. So you don't actually need to screw it down in the back, only in the front. Here we go. Just unscrewed my SSD. Look at how tiny this thing is. And the M2 drive is going to be even tinier. This thing's old. It's 250 gigabyte Samsung 840 Evo. All right, modular connections are out. Now let's just disconnect everything because all this other stuff is not modular. All right, most of the stuff is disconnected, but I think we got at least a couple more things connecting power to the backs of these hard drives, and that is very difficult to get to. Um, I think I'm gonna have to remove the back of the case so I can get at the connections behind. Oh yeah, this makes it a lot easier. It's really interesting, this stuff you see back here. Like, this is the CPU backplate. Gives it a lot of rigidity and strength to hold on that really tall tower cooler. I don't know if this is on there by default. I assume this comes with the tower cooler itself. I'm not 100% sure. Because I think stock coolers, because they're so much smaller, generally don't need a very strong piece of metal like this for a backplate. Oh, I also want to draw your attention to this. Oh my fucking god. This thing is gross. These two modular connectors that I took out of the power supply, these went into the backs of the hard drives. Pretty sure I'm not gonna need these for anything since I'm not gonna have any hard drives in cages other than the M2, but that just gets its power from the motherboard. Here's the big snake of a cord that goes to the motherboard. Let's take that out of here and shove it back from whence it came. Yeah, looks like the power supply is ready to come out. Just gotta unscrew it in the back. Here it is. It's dusty, it's heavy, and it's also beautiful. M... M... Does it say M122? M122 bronze. It's got a 120 millimeter ball bearing fan. Whole bottom is basically one big fan. This power supply is really nice. Power supply is nice and clean. got the things I need out of there, got the SSD that I'm going to use in my laptop eventually, and I've got the power supply, so it's time to close this thing up. I put all the screws that don't go for closing it up inside this little plastic bag. Um, there's going to be some loose parts in here. I guess I could tape them down. I don't think it matters. I'm not going to be like transporting this thing all over the place upside down. I'll just like shove them down there. I hope plastic bags don't make static electricity. It's fine. All right, now that we got all our parts together, I think it's time to build. Now there's a rough order of operations that I vaguely know. I think one of the early things we want to do is the motherboard. And specifically, I believe we should attach the backplate from the large tower cooler, the Noctua tower cooler. I think we should install the backplate before we install the motherboard, because I've heard that installing the backplate when the motherboard is in the case already can be difficult to impossible. So let's just install that out here. In fact, I think it might actually be a good idea to install the CPU and the tower cooler as well. I wish there was a version of this that was exactly the same, assuming this is a good board, which I think it is. I wish it was exactly the same, but just didn't have this hashtag gaming aesthetic. I mean, it's called the bazooka. It's got a freaking picture of a bazooka. What, does it explode? Ah, <sighs> whatever. It doesn't really matter once you get down to it. I'm not going to be staring at the box all day, I'm going to be staring at the monitor. Got a couple of SATA cables, which I don't believe I'll need for anything. Got the IO shield, goes in the back of the case, goes around all the connections in the back. And we have a tiny plastic bag with literally a single screw in it. What is this screw for? Advertisement for other MSI products. A CD for drivers and utilities, which I won't be using. In fact, I literally can't. It's kind of funny, the evolution of CD drives and DVD drives and 
how they just came and went. I mean, now I haven't, like, you might have noticed I had a CD drive in the front of my old computer, but it wasn't actually plugged in. It hasn't been plugged in for quite a while. It's just been sitting there when I cannibalized its SATA cable for something else for another cable that went bad. I just never plugged it in again because I never used it. And much to my surprise and also delight, a lot of modern computers, computer cases, don't even have bays for CD drives. I mean, if you notice the front, there's absolutely nowhere for any sort of CD drive to be. It's just a completely closed front. Warranty card thing? Instructions. Yeah, this is the quick installation guide here. And then the full manual. <laughs> Look at that branding. And we get a little sticker. So here's the back of the board. So it does have an included backplate. <laughs> it looks so tiny to me because I've never actually owned a Mac, not macro, uh, micro ATX motherboard before. I've always gone full ATX for no particular reason, honestly. I noticed that some of the MSI micro ATX boards only had two memory slots instead of four. I specifically wanted four slots though because memory on most boards with most types of CPUs will run in dual channel if you have two of the same stick, two of the same sort of stick next to each other. So like I have two sticks that I bought, so I'm gonna put one in say this black one and then the other in this other black RAM slot. And with those there, they'll be running in dual channel, which makes them run significantly faster than if you just had one. I want dual channel, which means I need two sticks of memory, but because of high RAM prices and because I'm not certain that I need more than the 16 gigabytes that I got in two sticks, I've got two eight gigabyte sticks, if I want room to upgrade, I want two more slots, right? Like if I just was going straight for 32 gigabytes and I could settle for two slots and that'd be fine because I wouldn't feasibly need more than that. But with going with 16, uh, I want the room to upgrade. All right, let's get a look at this tower CPU cooler. So it comes with a small box on top that has all the mounting equipment, thermal paste, screwdriver, some sort of low noise fan adapter thing. This thing's not going back together. That's a mess of cardboard. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with all that, to be honest. All right, let's get a look at this sucker. Oh, look at this thing. It's so big and also so shiny. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with how CPU coolers work, uh, I could take this little plastic thing off. This is to protect this, I think it's called a cold plate. This plate here, which is what actually makes contact with the top of the CPU. So it's protected, because if you notice it's, oh, I mean, look, <laughs> hi. You can see me. It's like a mirror because it's incredibly, um, very finely milled, which is good. That's what you want because the smoother it is, the more level it is, the uh, better it'll make contact with the CPU. All these pipes running through it, coming out of each side, um, those are called heat pipes. So the liquid inside of the heat pipes goes into this plate that touches the CPU. And then as it gets warm, it turns into vapor. And then it, the when it turns into vapor, that makes it travel up these pipes and these pipes go all the way through all of these aluminum fins. So the heat gets dissipated out these fins. And the reason we have fins instead of like a block, well, other than I guess cost and weight, uh, the biggest is of course you want a bunch of surface area because this is an air cooler. So all the surface area in between the fins is room for air to go through and cool it down. So heat goes from here by heat pipes, transfers it up here, and then is blown out of the heat sink by the fan. And this fan is held on with a little metal retention clip that kind of just wedges in between all these fins. So in the accessory packet, the screwdriver that it comes with is actually pretty damn well built. It's a lot better than I expected. Very long, very shiny, feels nice and smooth, and I was thinking it'd be something that you would only need if you didn't have a screwdriver, but it uh, actually probably would be better than my screwdriver for this, because the length would allow you to tighten this from above the top of the heatsink, where my current screwdriver is much shorter than this and also has a thicker handle, so it probably wouldn't even really fit in here. It'd have to be at a, a weird angle, which wouldn't be very good. Could strip the threads. Okay, so looking at this instruction booklet for the cooler, it looks like we actually do leave the back plate that's already on the motherboard in place, but we do remove the stock retention bracket on the front. So this thing and the same thing on the other side. We remove these. Go, 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 go. 
So there's two sets of brackets depending on which way you want to orient this thing. If I use the short ones, which I think are oriented something like this, um, that will make the cooler have the longer direction be this way. Which, depending on what you're doing, might be a good thing, but in my case would be a bad thing, because if you notice, it covers up, uh, looks like two of the RAM slots. It's possible the RAM is short enough that maybe it wouldn't quite hit the bottom of the fan here, but I'm not going to take the chance. Might as well just mount it like this, because then we definitely won't have a problem. Now that the brackets are on, next step is to put on the CPU before we put on the cooler. So there's two parts to this. The first, and what takes up the vast majority of the space and the weight, is the included default heatsink. Let's get a look at this thing. From what I've heard, it's actually surprisingly good. That's not to say it's good, it's not. But it's just better than most stock coolers are. Because usually they're very bad, this one is just kinda bad. Uh, it still will give you vastly inferior cooling compared to the other one that I have, the Noctua. But yeah, apparently it's not absolutely terrible. And uh, also, if you're into LED lights, it has LED lights on it, so it looks kind of colorful as it spins. So what is it about this cooler that makes it so much worse than the other one? I think part of it is just the weight of the material. So let's weigh this. I don't know if you can see that, but that's 582 grams. I should probably weigh it without the fan, but I don't know how to take this thing's fan off and I don't really want to. So 582, this one, this one is almost 582 without the fan. Add on the fan, and we have 734. So it's a bit heavier. Honestly, not as heavier as I thought. So I think just the sheer weight, the sheer bulk of material is not the main reason that this thing performs better. I suspect a big reason is probably the heat pipes. So this one has five heat pipes coming out of each side. I guess you just think of them as just five heat pipes, right? Because they're just a big loop. They just go all the way from the top and they come down, and then they go through this plate, and then they go up the other side. So I guess it is just five. So this thing has five heat pipes, and this thing only has two. Although, I don't know if this actually matters, but they do appear to be separate heat pipes. It's actually two coming out of both sides, and they're separate. I'm not sure how much that matters. This one also has some copper. Obviously the heat pipes are copper, and this plate that contacts the CPU is also copper. Copper does transmit energy better than aluminum. I think copper is also extremely heavy, which is probably why this thing is surprisingly hefty for the size. I'm actually honestly surprised, given how expensive this cooler is, that it doesn't seem to have copper. I guess it's possible that this is like nickel-plated um, copper. Interestingly, the little manual that comes in here doesn't seem to actually show me how to... Uh, put this CPU into the socket. Not that it's complicated, I'm pretty sure I know. It's just that this thing is $300 right now. And so this is the bottom of the CPU, the part that actually connects into the motherboard. Let me turn the flashlight on for a second so you can really see that it has hundreds and hundreds of tiny, um, I think they're like gold or copper or something pins. They might be like gold plated, something like that. Yeah, uh, if you bend or God help you break one of these pins, there's a very good chance that you just bricked your CPU. Not guaranteed. Sometimes some of these pins are not really used for anything, but most of them are pretty important. <laughs> so I'm scared. Now I believe before we put the CPU in, I think we lift, I think we lift this little bar up. Yeah, it's actually got a tiny little icon on here that shows up for unlock and down for lock. Just want to be 100% sure. It's been four and a half years since I've done this. I don't want to mess up this part. Okay. Ugh. Nerve rack. All right. Let's grab the CPU. Gently. I'm actually like genuinely scared, holy shit. By the way, CPUs are surprisingly very heavy. This thing is, is really heavy. I'm not sure exactly what that's from. Is it the chip itself? Is it the um, integrated heat spreader, which is this metal thing that's on top? This metal thing that's on top of the CPU, that's not actually the top of like the actual processor itself, the, the chip, the silicon, the whatever. It's actually an integrated heat spreader. It's actually the real processing is beneath this. This is just a cover basically for really just for protection. The actual silicon chip itself, I believe, is really quite fragile. 
You might be wondering what orientation to put this processor in. Thankfully, it only goes in one way. Of course, if you try to force it the wrong way, you're probably going to break a bunch of pins, but yeah, it's not too bad. If you see, three of these corners are basically triangles, and then this one corner here is a square, and it's got a little kind of arrow on it. Just match it up with the square part right there. So, so I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to install a CPU. It's not going to break. It's fine. People do this all the time. Seriously, hardware reviewers probably swap out like 10 CPUs a day. It's fine. Hmm. Yeah. I just drop it in. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> I'm delaying for time because I'm scared, but also when you put it in, you really do want to make sure that you do not force it. It should just drop in. If it doesn't drop in, realign it. Don't try to push it in. These pins, these hundreds of pins on the bottom are extremely, extremely thin. Come on. Oh, there we go. Oh, 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 okay. And now we tighten it and we're good. Yeah. All right, let's turn on the computer. Next step is to apply the thermal compound. Um, some of it comes in this tube here. This is enough for probably like 50 applications. Uh, this tube comes with the Noctua fan. You don't get a tube with the default heatsink that comes with the CPU, but it does have a pre-applied little layer. So if you put it on just once, you're fine, but if you take it off, you're gonna wanna reapply every time you take it off, so. You, then you'd want to buy a separate tube or something. But anyway, the thermal compound, the point of it is to bridge the microscopic gaps between the top of the IHS, that is this surface here, bridge the gap between that and this surface here that's going to be making contact with it on the bottom of the heatsink. Because they're almost flat, but there's, you know, microscopic little tiny peaks and valleys and holes, and air doesn't transmit heat very well, so the thermal compound is something that's Although not nearly as conductive as these metals that are being used here to spread heat, it's a lot more conductive than air. All right, you're supposed to put a very small drop of this in the center of the CPU. I might do it a little bit differently. The instructions for the Noctua fan actually say, don't apply too much or you might hurt thermal performance. That's actually not true. Um, there's a YouTube channel and a site called Gamers Nexus that uh, does some really good hardware reviews and informational videos. And they actually tested using way, and I mean way, way too much thermal compound. Like, they tested using maybe half or the entire size of this tube on a CPU, and it didn't hurt thermal performance at all. It was perfectly fine. It was just a waste and a mess. But yeah, you really can't use too much in terms of hurting performance. You can use too little, though. But you really don't need much, because it's going to get completely flattened out when you tighten down the heatsink. So like that is probably enough. But just to make sure it reaches the outsides, I'm gonna go ahead and put just like a tiny dab in each corner. That's probably too much, but it's fine. It's a little bit tricky to get the fan even as far as whether it's twisted this way or that way because you essentially have the granularity of moving it each individual fin, which there's a lot of fins, um, but I think this seems to be about right. I've eyeballed it, I felt it underneath. I could go up more with it, but I wanna make sure that I'm at or below the tips of these heat pipes because my clearance on this heatsink compared to, uh, keep in mind this is gonna be facing the tempered glass, the case. The clearance of this heatsink with the case is extremely small. In fact, this literally to the millimeter is the recommended max size. The max supported heatsink height is 158 millimeters. This is 158 millimeters. So I made sure the fan is very slightly below the tips of the heat pipes. So there's all sorts of fan pins on the motherboard. This one is CPU fan. It's not that there's anything in particular about the CPU fan that makes it special. I mean, you could plug any fan into there. I think it's just how the how the BIOS or the system treats the fan. I think if it sees the CPU temperature going up, then it will try to 
if it can, you know, speed up the fan connected to CPU fan. Figured I might as well connect that before it gets in the case. Really no reason to wait on that. Turning my attention back to the case, I don't think it make much, makes much sense to put in the motherboard right now, just yet. I think I should put in the power supply first, which goes somewhere up here. Let's take a look at what we can see from the back of the case. We're definitely going to want back here to at least wire, if not other things. There seem to be thumb screws, sort of. This one... Be... <clears throat> I think I actually need a screwdriver to get that one out, but this one's nice. Oh, that's so cool! So I've never actually um, experienced a case that has this, but I, I've seen this in some reviews. I think these are called captive screws. These are captive thumb screws. And that means that they don't actually come out completely. Like, you unscrew them, but if you keep unscrewing them, they won't actually fall out. Which is good, because then you can't lose them, right? I mean, why not just leave them there? Yeah, so this gives us access to a bunch of stuff back here. There's a bundle of cables here. This is stuff that's going to connect to the motherboard and allow the motherboard to communicate with the front I.O. panel. So it's going to be the audio connections, the USB ports. Um, I think, yeah, power. The power in the... I think this is the reset button, probably, maybe. These all connect to the motherboard. It's got to get those signals for it to do the things. All right, I got all these cords unbundled. Um, well, I've got this completely open. I think I should take out this drive bay here. I'm going to try to use the screws that came with the case to secure it, since the I think the screws I had in here in the other case were just like the raw silvery steel look, whatever they're made out of. But obviously since this case is black, um, I'd like to go with black screws. So I think these will work. With the power supply installed, I think it's almost time to put in the motherboard. A couple small things to check. I think I need to put the IO shield on the back of the motherboard before I put it in. Apparently that can't be put in after, it has to be put in before. So let me go grab that. For some reason I assume the IO shield actually was installed on the motherboard, and then the motherboard goes in, but no, it actually goes into the case, and then the motherboard just kind of pops into it. Perfect. There we go, it's got a pop. Okay, it's in. It's a little bit scary to install, by the way. All those little hook things on the inside are actually super thin and super sharp, so be careful with your fingers. All right, I am super nervous about this, but I think it's time to actually install the motherboard. So, I believe these four screws are what's used to secure the motherboard to the case. If you look close, you can see there's a, what's called a standoff, right here, right here, and then, you can't really see them, but there's two ink eyes. Yeah, there you go. There's two at the top as well. Those are used to keep the motherboard from actually touching the chassis. As far as I know, that's used to keep the motherboard from shorting or anything like that. You know, there's all sorts of components on the motherboard that could short if metal was able to bridge them, so if it was just touching the case directly, that'd be a bad idea. So the standoffs on the motherboard connect to these spots. Those circles. I don't know why there's so many of them. Maybe it's just different cases. Maybe it would have different standoff spots. But the manual shows just four of them in a grid-like pattern being the ones that you uh, screw down into the case. So you can probably tell by the rings around these that they're, as far as I know, electrically isolated. So that, therefore, metal screws can touch them and it's not going to mess with any of the components. So, uh, yeah, let's just try to put the motherboard in and see if the standoffs are in the right place. I think they are. Okay, the standoffs definitely match up with the motherboard. That's great. To get the motherboard to sort of stay, I pretty much had to shove the things through the I.O. ports, and that kind of helps the whole thing stay. Some of these some of these don't poke through, they're just kind of flush with it, or will be once it's tightened down. But others like the DVI actually poke through, and the audio ports as well. So that seems to actually be helping stop it from falling back out. Yeah, I should probably tighten it down before something bad happens. Okay, motherboard is installed. Um, I messed up a little bit at first. I had trouble figuring out exactly which of these 
poles actually had the standoffs under them. It was very hard to see. So I actually put a couple screws into the wrong place. These ones on the far side, this one and this one up here, I put screws into those, but that's that's too far out. Um, it did actually screw into the case, but it screwed into the case in a place that doesn't have standoffs. So the whole right side of the board just kind of bent a little bit, which is fine, by the way. Boards, PCB boards bend, it's okay, <laughs> as long as you don't bend them too much. So I took those out and put them in their proper place. The proper places are a little bit awkward. One is right here next to the CPU fan connector. It's covered there. And the other is right down here, directly beneath. A little bit kind of awkward, but got him in. Now, I noticed this problem. This thing is, the fan is sagging. So I'm thinking I need to connect this metal clip further in so that it doesn't have as much give. There we go, looks like I got it. Yeah, you just need to put these clips in kind of one notch further, which is a little bit difficult for the top one because there's so little room to actually grab it. Just because of the case. In other cases, I'm sure it would be easy. But yeah, now that those are tighter, it's not sagging anymore, doesn't really move. Looks good. Alright, well for now I think that's a pretty good place to end the building part one of this new computer. So I hope you've enjoyed, and in part two, I think I'm going to start out by probably putting in the fans, because I'm thinking... I don't want to fill this up with too much stuff before I put in the fans, because the fans are going to be really pretty tightly up against everything. 